Well guys, I worked uh, pretty much all day yesterday, and uh, this is nothing new to you because I already had this done. Um, but I did have to uh, take a step back before I finished this system over here yesterday because I came in, the pump kicked on, and very quickly I could hear the pump was out of fluid to pump. It was pumping dry. And I was like, well, that's, uh, that's not good. So I opened it up, and it was damn near empty. There was about an inch of water in it. I went back here. <clears throat> I've got this all set up to go now. i got a union in there so it can be disconnected. Got some fluid in there. Um, <clears throat> and this is my refill tank so that I don't have to. All I can do, I can fill that up, and then that thing can run for, you know, a month or so if it's full. Maybe more. <clears throat> And, uh, in fact, well more than a month. It should be able to run, if that's full right there and that's full, it should be able to run about 45 to 60 days without touching it. So, obviously, um, I didn't have it full. I had it about the level I just showed you. But, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, it should have ran weeks. Why was it empty? Well, <clears throat> I had all the pipes inside the tank dry fitted together so that I could remove things and move things around if I wanted to. And one of them blew loose, and that made the other one blow loose, and the pump pumped all the water straight up in the air and out the sides and edges over, you know, probably four or five cycles, emptied the, the tank altogether. So I went in, I glued up all of the internal plumbing and put a union in there so that we can remove the pump and we can remove the other side without having problems and conflicts and things like that. So that's, that's taken care of. So I had to redo all that, then I had to mix up a bunch of fluid. And that, remember, that's a 40-gallon that's a gallon tub so i put about 30 35 gallons in there plus whatever's back there so uh it just took some time to get that all done but i was able to turn back around and get on this this is running a 17 gallon tote it's a pretty small anemic pump the pump's only about as big as my hand uh but it's sufficient it's just sufficient i might actually upgrade it i like to have a little extra capacity in my pumps if you've seen my other videos, I like to run my pump so that line comes out. There's a valve, an inline valve, and then it passes through. And then you have a control valve over there. As you can see, that valve's all the way open. Uh, the one in there is all the way closed. This pump is just enough, which means from an energy standpoint, it's exactly what you want to do. My experience with pumps is they tend to degrade in performance over time. So I like to start out with more than I need. That way, as they kind of degrade in performance, you still have enough and you get a longer life out of your pump. But I had that pump sitting around, um, so I'm, I'm looking at other pump options. It's just a cheap pump off Amazon, like a $30 pump. So I'm looking at other options, and uh, I'd, I'd, like to have, I'd like to have that spray on that vent nozzle down there because it gives me more oxygen in my water. But uh, as you can see, we got everything plumbed up, and uh, here's our delivery line. Water comes in here, trucks down there, overflows here, trucks down to here, overflows down to there, goes down there and goes back into the sump. So really, really simple. One point of delivery, one point of return. Um, you can see strawberry plants. I cut a hole in the bottom of the planter and I've dropped the roots through the hole and left the chrome above the, uh, the grade. And the water on these uh, cups is up to about, just about that first line, maybe a little lower than that first line, just barely touching the bottom, kind of perfect. Here's my overflow. And you can see I did exactly the opposite of what I said I was gonna do. I ended up cutting one more hole going into the bulkhead and using a stand up and a 90 stood up almost perfectly straight. Ends up being just about the perfect amount. And if you get enough of a head, that this actually starts to exceed the capacity. What's really cool is because of the way this overflow is designed, it immediately forms a siphon and pulls the level down, but as soon as you get any air into that, that bulkhead there, it breaks. And then, of course, the next one will pull a siphon, or the other one will pull a siphon. So it's, a, it's an example of kind of an on-demand siphon only when necessary. Now, with the speed of the pump that I'm running, it, it's, it's very hard to even get it there. I kind of did it on purpose up here, to test it, I, I basically plugged the hole, let the level come up, and, and checked out what it did. And it did, like I said, it immediately pulled the siphon and then broke. So it's kind of a, a nice little uh, extra proofing. Now look at all the strawberry plants. I ventured out, in spite of the deadly COVID virus, and I went to Lowe's, where everybody was behaving very, very, very uh, appropriately, uh, given that we're in a pandemic situation. 
Um, the, the people doing the checkout register all had a sneeze guard up, which is just basically a piece of plex that they bolted up. Uh, everybody was staying six feet apart. They had markings on the floor. <clears throat> the line was long enough that the uh, line exceeded where they had the markings, and people just used their common sense, something that's not very common anymore, and stayed six feet apart. I'd say 60, 70 percent of the people were wearing masks about. Uh, the other balance were not. But um, I got 15 strawberry plants. <clears throat> so 15 strawberry plants is enough to do that top pipe. Well, all the top pipe's full. Middle pipe's full. Bottom pipe's full. Why? Well, almost every single one of these plants had two chromes, which is the actual plant itself, in, and some had three or more. So what we did when we rinsed off the roots, we went ahead and um, just separated them. And when we put them in last night, this little guy here went... <laughs> And for some reason, these two, that like that guy's kind of wimpy, I expected it. These two up here. And I was kind of worried at first because they were my first two, and I thought, oh, are they all going to do it? These two here, first two, just went flat. And it was pretty hot yesterday. Um, storms came through, and by the time I was doing this, we were past that. And it was, it was pretty intense heat hitting this stuff, so that's probably what did it. But none of the rest of them have ever, uh, ever wilted. They stayed up, and then this morning, you know, these two guys were here. This little one here, this little wimpy one, he was so sad, I didn't even plant him. I didn't even want the effort. I just stuck him in one of the cups and figured if he comes back, I'll plant him. So I came out this morning and planted him. So that's it. We Now, now i got to get with fixing up this greenhouse. I want to get the cover on it, but I'm not in a huge hurry for that. I mean, I, I'm already trying to figure out how to make it logistically make sense to be able to in the summer to roll up the cover on the front anyway because we just don't need this thing closed in in our summers. We really don't. Shade cloth, yes. Plastic, no. I'm looking at doing some reconfiguration on the doors. These doors were huge because we wanted to be able to get IBCs in and out of here. Uh, it's really not necessary anymore. So I might go to a half-size door on each side, kind of figure out what to do here. That would give me some more wall to work with. Um, I've also thought about just uh, plasticking in half of those with that. I have some really great greenhouse plastic. I need to fill that big hole in. Remember, the reason that big hole's back there is, uh, well, I had two big IBCs back there that were part of a large aquaponics system, and I needed to get as much depth as I could, and that's as much as I can get. That's sitting on solid rock there. You see this big mess here? Yeah, I made a real effort to, as I was drilling everything and, and doing everything, put it all in that little tub so it could all be thrown away yesterday. And I tripped into this hole. Right as I got finished yesterday, said a bunch of really bad words that I won't even say on YouTube. And uh, left, I'll, I'll pick them up later today because I was done at that point. I went in for the night. Um, but overall, I am. this is a totally different environment than it was when we started out. Um, I think it's much more an appropriate use of space. I'm looking at getting some Kratky in on the sides using those little four-gallon totes with some shelving. I'm thinking even maybe right there, like one, two, as many as three shelves right there for Kratky. Uh, leaving this area here and here a little bit more open instead of kind of closing myself in. I'm not real hip on maybe doing the Kratky low here because I need to be able to get in there to access that bucket. And I don't want to make my life harder. I've thought about bringing like a bench across here, just about a little lower than this one that we could stack Kratky on. And that would give me a nice three-layer system in here. Uh, I just don't want to make my life difficult in accessing back here. So bringing it, you know, here into here with maybe like a hinge top on it uh, might be a good way to go. Yeah, I'd build it a little sturdier than that. That's using fence wood for those buckets to sit on. The two by fours this way are plenty strong, but those are really, you know, that bucket, if you completely fill that bucket, um, what is it, 40 pounds, and it, it never gets completely full. So that's plenty for that, but if you're, you know, my 200-pound body steps up on there, that's probably going to give way in time. So maybe I'd build a little bit more robust, which would let me, see I have that cleat right there. I'll put another one about right here, and then bring a wire out, and I could stand on there to manage and pick tomatoes without having to get a ladder out, and I could also use it to put pots on. I'm really not sure what I'm going to do yet. I do know that my next major goal in life is to fill this hole in and get this all cleaned up. And I'm probably, whatever I'm going to do next, other than maybe a couple benches for some Kratky, to put some Kratky fennel in or some stuff like that, I'm probably done here and it's time to move on to, to getting this once, once the, this on the road with uh, the ponds and everything going in there. Uh, but I, I told my wife today, like, things are getting done. I feel good about it. Nothing got done this winter compared to what I really wanted to. Um, 
But I am uh, I'm really happy with this. I will tell you this. Building these hydro systems out of this 4-inch pipe is expensive. It adds up, I think for a hobbyist, it doesn't really matter. You put in, you know, maybe double the capacity of this and it's I mean, how much food is a hobbyist going to produce? If you go commercial, I think you, you know, looking at the way they do NFT with the uh, fence posts might be a lot more economical. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I don't think I would want to build a commercial operation with this type of a setup. It's, it, it's, it's just too expensive. These end caps are expensive. Um, one of the things I kind of struggled with is my hand doesn't fit in a three-inch hole. <laughs> So I was worried about being able to get these things installed, these overflows. And when I started doing the math, talk about expensive, to make this work, I just don't even want to go into it. But there's a lot more fittings to, to be able to make this work because there's such a shallow body here to be able to set your outflow over here. Otherwise, you're turning your 90. And once you turn your 90, you're all cattywampus and you're off coming back into here. Um, but what I decided was if I couldn't get my hand in there, my wife could get my hand in there. And if, I, if she couldn't, my grandson could. I was able to, for some reason, two of them I was able to put in. This one up here, I was unable to get my hand in there right and get level and get that pipe extended. So all I did, real simple, I disconnected the bulkhead, put the pipe in the bulkhead, and then threaded it back through. And since I could stick my finger through the hole and put my pinky inside the bulkhead, pull it out, that made it really easy. So now all I've got to do if I want to actually lower my levels is just rotate, because that's dry fit. I can just rotate that 90. But right now, as you, here's a good way you can see how much water is in there. And so once everybody gets really happy roots, I'll probably lower this so we're just below that. That'll keep all of this nice and dry. We won't have any kind of uh, uh, mold or algae or anything growing on the surface of these. Because you can see they actually stay fairly damp. And uh, I like to keep the surface dry. Anyway. Hope you guys have enjoyed this build. Like I said, I'm gonna get it all cleaned up in here, but the build is done. Um, I got 10 other plants I can I can pop in there. Uh, I have a feeling when these strawberries throw runners, this is just gonna be a strawberry wall, as long as they do well. Uh, these are an ever-bearing variety of strawberry. You know, they say beggars can't be choosers. This weekend, I was a beggar. Uh, Ozark Beauty. Uh, everything, they had two or three other varieties. They were all June bearers. So they bear real heavy in June, but then they don't bear anymore. Uh, these are not daylight sensitive, so they bear less at a time, but they bear over a much longer season. Uh, that just works better for me in my situation. So we'll see how that variety does. If they do good, like I said, that'll be the strawberry wall. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys later. Remember, this entire series is on a playlist you can find in the video notes, along with all kinds of other cool resources like where I get all my stuff.